What's going on everybody? Dutchie here. Just wanted to make a quick uh, video with some thoughts that I have for Gears of War 5 compared to all the other Gears of course. Um, like you can see in the title of the video, uh, this video is about the discussion, the endless discussion we can have about two tunings or universal tuning. Now, I've been playing Gears since 2008. Started in 2007, but really like got my own Xbox with Gears of War 2 and haven't really stopped from there. I've taken some breaks here and there, but I always come back to it because it's one of my favorite games. Um, so needless to say, I've got a lot of experience with all the different tunings that have been around over the world, you know, over the last uh, 12 years, something like that. And I've seen a lot of opinions and updates fly by, some of which good, most of them bad. <laughs> on both things opinions and updates but i figured you know before gears 5 comes out before there's any news about the new tunings in gears war 5 uh or gears 5 i should say i wanted to just lay out my opinion uh, and my perspective on the gears community how they take you know how, how they i guess express themselves in terms of knowledge of the game arguments um and just spread my thoughts on it and what my used to my my thoughts used to be basically because I thought about it this uh, you know over the last couple of years made some videos on it talked about it in streams that I do um, had some discussions on Twitter but there's never really been a time or a place when I thought you know I got things figured out reasonably figured out anyway so first off let me just say that yes in my opinion a universal tuning would be better flat out that's always the case in every game you know one single tuning however people like to bring up uh, that a universal tuning in gears 4 has divided the community and i disagree with that because number one in my opinion the gears community ever since you know comp i suppose or or gb game battles has been a thing the community has been dividing itself uh, since then, and which was years ago. And not so much that the game told you that you're divided, but more just as a preference of playing. You see, when Gears 4 uh, came out, and we just came from Gears UE, when there was one tuning, um, people either liked it or they disliked it. So you had a crowd that would keep playing, but disliked the tuning. Uh, and you had a crowd that... Uh, liked it but didn't play either because they weren't skilled enough or they were bored with that game and when gears 4 came out what tc said was that they put in two tunings to please both types of players the solo player which is core and the comp player which is teamwork based obviously you know less range for the shotgun etc you guys know the deal if you've played the game um now in the beginning i was very much against all the preference that comp used to get uh, because in my opinion they're still the minority the absolute tiniest minority of the community in terms of players uh, now again i don't have any numbers but that's just going off all the game types we have and all the experiences from other games now what tc also brought up was that the core uh, tuning in gears 4 is almost identical or pretty much identical to the, the tuning in gears 3 now, when people bring up that Gears 4 is too strong, yes, I agree, it is too strong. But in my opinion, the most important thing in Gears is consistency. So even if things are too strong, in any case, people can just, you know, each and every person can do the same thing. They can expect the same thing. That's what I care about, right? And that's not really being pushed here. When people talk about, you know, universal tuning versus two tunings, everybody seems to take it to the extreme. Every time I try to argue for two tunings, people act as if all I care about is two tunings, that I won't go along with a universal tuning. When little do they understand that uh, it's not about whether it's two tunings or universal tuning, it's whether the tunings are good or bad. See, in my opinion, in Gears 4, the tunings are all over the place. You know, I, I'm sure in LAN, comp is way better than it is online, sure. But the majority of players that play the game, first impression or not, first time players or not, they need to play the game online. It needs to work online as well. And the way it works with comp at the moment is there, there's no, you know, lack compensation in quotations, right? 
devs have already confirmed there's no land compensation so what that means is basically whoever has the better connection wins if two people shot at exactly the same time um the problem with that is that that's an impossible scenario in most cases most people don't have you know the exact same connection or shoot at the same exact time and in core it's a lot more forgiving right because the range is more people can play for you know downs more especially if you're a solo player and i'm not talking about the one percent the diamond fires of everybody i'm talking about the grand you know everybody that's played the game right whether you're good or bad at the game in core a two shot down is a two shot down sure some people take shots more than others but in the general sense you could expect people to go down in two 10 feet shots um where the problem comes is when the two tunings if they go for two, two tunings in gears five is they shouldn't different it should be different night and day basically what they should be in my opinion is very close to the middle so say they take the four gears four core tuning they put it in Gears 5 as the main tuning of the game for all the game modes. They tune down the damage just a little bit, right? Or increase the difficulty of using the guns, right? But then instead of making a whole different damage model for comp, they make the, the quote-unquote core tuning, for lack of uh, better words, um, they make it harder to use, add more recoil to the guns, add bigger spread, as in more spreading of the bullets right when you blind fire with a lancer make it more like gears one where you basically can't lancer someone without aiming them right unless they're basically point blank and if you don't have a lancer then you're pretty much screwed i mean nasher excuse me um so if they're gonna do something like that that that's why i've always advocated like yeah okay if tc is gonna push for two tunings that make them both good but what they've kept doing is you know push one to its absolute limit and hey, Gears 4 is over, so whatever now. But in the past, it was very frustrating to deal with. TC would bring changes to core, like the Hammer Burst buff that they made, that they left in the game for a good, I don't know, six months or something. It was enormous. And it pushed so many people away because ultimately, what people are always going to do is play the way to win, right? And in Gears 3, this is what happened. Uh, the game came out game came out with retros and sawn off as starting weapons right and the majority of the community and i mean the people who already played the game multiplayer wise and not just played the campaign and horde and then dumped the game again um they basically uh uh told everybody that played retro and sawn off that they were complete dog shit at the game excuse my french but that's what they did right and as the time as time went on um, people got more and more used to not playing with retros when you spawn in, not playing with sonos as you spawn in. The the community itself divided itself by using guns, but then ultimately, because everybody disliked people who use those guns, uh, people that did eventually had to just get along with the rest or quit the game. So after a while, when you were playing against good, you know, OG players, you wouldn't see those things in the game. You wouldn't see people running around with Lancer, uh, Retro, sorry, and hiding with uh, Sonoff because number one, it was boring. Number two, it was inefficient as a team uh, um, teammate. Sure, the Retro was overpowered, but having a Sonoff instead of a Nasher, if you don't need it, don't use it, basically, right? But as the game kind of died, especially in Europe, because that's where I'm from, um, me as a streamer, I had to start playing with people in the States, uh, Mexico, Spain, just anyone I could get my hands on just to get into a ranked game of TDM or King of the Hill because pretty much everything else was dead. Mind you, ranked in Europe has always been nothing compared to the United States. Um, but what happened in the last, I would say, year and a half before uh, Ultimate Edition released, every single player that wanted to win would literally run retro. They would not care anymore about the standard of what people played as. They would just run retro just to win. They didn't care about playing the game for fun. They would just want to win and get people to quit. So I went through that for about 18 months of continuous running into stack teams that ran retro stream sniping, which I know most of you guys will never witness, but that's a thing that happens, right? That's something I had to deal with. But it gave me a unique perspective because that's something that I had to share. You know, if I want to stream the game, I can't 
only record matches that I want to record. I have to just play the game as is, right? And we had these massive discussions back then about like how newbie these people were. And as the games went on, as UE released and you had, you know, no stopping power and stuff, you could tell that these people who weren't used to playing, you know, bare bones, Lancer, Nasher, and just good teamwork or, or uh, movement and stuff, they were falling behind. So when you were playing maps like Rooftops on Ultimate Edition, where they had the Hammer of Dawn, these exact people did the same thing that everybody hated back on... Uh, 2006 2007 when gears one was released they would just hide with hammer of dawns same on courtyard with the hammer of dawn in the middle of the map um let me think um same on uh uh the train station tyro station i think it was called with with a train ri- drives through the middle um same thing they would just hide everybody would just hide and gears is not a game where you hide i get if you're playing comp- competitive and you need to win I totally understand that. And everything is fair, right? All is fair in love and war, right? Especially in a game like this, you're basically a bunch of gladiators, in my opinion, virtual gladiators. You go into this arena, and you battle it out with whatever you have. But there used to be this code, this just unwritten rule where these retro and all these like cheesy guns uh, were for people who didn't really know how to play or just had, didn't have the confidence to hang with the rest of everybody, which is fine, right? That's what they were implemented for. And I'm talking about the retro and, and son off. Uh, but as the game evolved, you know, UE kind of did its own thing. When the, when the circuit came out for that game, everybody that has watched esports back then knows what I'm talking about here. You would watch people play execution and they tried to do blitz, but blitz didn't really work out. They would play execution and they had matches that were up to like four hours long. You know, because these people knew the game so well, they knew that if they did anything that was a bit too risky at that point, they would just lose the round or potentially lose the tournament. And so they camped. And I'm talking, when I'm talking camping, I'm not talking just camping in spawn. I'm talking about people would camp in specific spots until the round is over and they switch sides and then they would be aggressive. Now that's obviously a flaw in game design and I don't blame these players. But that's what happens when you morph a game around one weapon setting around one way of playing that eventually people who master it will know everything about it and whether you're a professional player or not most of you guys that probably watch this video are gears enthusiasts right you love the game you'll play the game day and night if you could and you would want to learn everything about the game now here's where the problem arises right when you say only have the competitive tuning a la gears 4 right 2.8 I think it is right now. And you just put that all across the game. The people who can't play that way or don't prefer to play that way, they're faced with a choice. Suck it up for the people who want to play that way or don't play the game. Right? And what TC did was they put core in for the people who play by themselves, don't have the time to play what they or to learn the game because... Let's face it, it's so hard to learn, especially nowadays, going against people who are 10,000 times better than people used to be six years ago. Right? No one has the time or effort to really get into that anymore compared to how they used to. Um, but what they did was they made, the, they made the tuning so far apart, especially comp with all these changes. And I understand what the comp players are saying when they say they can never get used to the game. Uh, it sucks. But it's not like you can't play. You just prefer not to. And another issue that TC made, and that didn't exist before, was that these um, game modes that people love, like TDM, I suppose. I'm not a big fan, but it's part of the gears now. They put that in core only. So people who like to play that game type are faced with another choice, right? They have to play core in this case. And you, you could play comp warm up now, but that wasn't the release thing, right? So now they're faced with another choice. Do I play core or do I play, you know, the, the play style that I want in a the game type that is not suited for me right now? A la Escalation. You need a team for that game mode. So what TC has done is not only divide the game, uh, the, the player base, or give people a place to play the way they want, but they've divided the player base more by putting the game types in sp- certain play styles. And that's something that's 
that makes it even worse for everybody pretty much, right? And if I could, th this is the thing. I, I would play the comp tuning and side more with people who play comp if I could play King of the Hill there, if I could play Guardian there. But I'm also the type of player that throughout all these years, I can get used to any tuning. But that's, you know, it's not like I'm the average guy or anything, right? I've put tens of thousands of hours into the game. So for me, I can learn that. But there's plenty of people who who don't want to go through that anymore, right? And why should they? And they never asked to split the tunings. Anyway, bottom line is, to me, if they're going to go with a universal tuning, they run a risk at disappointing everyone, right? Everyone. Because people in Gears always have something to complain about, but as long as they can actually play the game and the game is playable, they will keep playing. But if you make a universal tuning, like Gears 2 Title Update 6, that is universally hated, right? Then everyone will have one thing in common. That is, they will dislike the way everyone has to play in the game modes that they love to play. And at that point, it really doesn't matter, uh, you know, what game type you're playing. Because if you can't enjoy the way the game works, who cares, right? I'm sure plenty of you guys would enjoy Call of Duty, right? If the game wasn't so structured for casual players. But there are still people who really love playing hardcore uh, Call of Duty when it's even, quote-unquote, easier, right, to, to kill people. So there's, there's, a, there's, but again, you have all the game types across all, um, all tunings in that game. And the same goes with Battlefield. You can play anything you want on any tuning that they offer. But Gears has split that up. And it's always sort of been that way, right? Gears 3, people in competitive played King of the Hill. They, people liked watching King of the Hill more than Execution. I, I would say, because it was just more action and longer and more clutch uh, moments um, than there was in Execution. But when Escalation came out, people that played the comp tuning and s like literally only cared about the comp tuning started looking at people who played King of the Hill on core as, oh, you're just a bad player because you play core. But that's not the case. These people have to play and I have to play King of the Hill because... That's, I have to play core, I mean, because that's where King of the Hill is. So I never had a choice. And it's not like TC is stupid and doesn't realize, like, uh, you know, we could have made it comp as well. For some reason, they keep deciding not to. And in my opinion, it's probably the numbers. It just doesn't reflect the numbers. People in the past have not um, shown that they either play uh, comp King of the Hill or they don't play at all. And that's what happens in core. People either play the game type that they want on, on that setting, or they don't play at all. They don't, they don't step over the comp as much as, you know, TC probably hoped for. Because there's no demand, right? If there's no demand, why would, you, why would you supply people with that stuff? So, to reiterate on my thoughts on this, I'm not against a universal tuning. I'm for universal tuning, but... In all my time of watching TC and watching other games and thinking back over the years, what Epic did with the Zeta playlist and the Alpha playlist, um, I don't believe if TC goes through universal tuning and they mess it up the first time, I don't think they can recover from it. Because the backlash in the Gears community is so big, and I'm speaking at the moment on the 19th of June, I think, yeah, the 19th of June, 2019, people saw the inversed omen and they have lost their shit already. When instead of just having some type of constructing criticism, they just go, no, this is shit. Get out of here. You know, it's, it's just trash. And I agree, it looks bad. But if you listen to the reasoning behind it, you can understand where their idea comes from. And if you don't go along with someone's idea, then how can you really criticize it? Anyway, if they're going to go for a two-way tuning, it should be core, but weaker and a bit harder to play. And if they're going to go with a comp variation of that, make the rest of the game more difficult, right? Less HUD interface, maybe faster active reload. So like you have to click RB quicker so the reload goes by faster. Maybe more recoil, more spread for the, the, uh, the rifles in the game. So it's actually harder to suppress someone or, or hit someone in general, right? Um, maybe make the crosshair bloom faster. I'm not sure. Just things that don't really affect the absolute core of the game, but more all the surrounding elements. 
Um, what they did in 2.8 with the health recovery system, it's it's weird because it's inconsistent. Everybody knows the red ring that you get. And the omen is inconsistent. Uh, sometimes you're full red. You can still take bullets. Sometimes you are not damaged at all. And then, pff, you know, you go down across the map when that really shouldn't have happened. It's it's crazy how that works. Um, what I'm hoping for in Gears 5, of course, is that whatever tuning they go for, they stand by it. And if there's a problem with it, that it's 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 um, it's adjustable. It's not something where they don't know where it came from, right? And in terms of one of the most important things for me when it comes to the verses is the net code. And if you don't know what net code is, I highly suggest you look it up. I could probably put a link in the description if you enjoy that type of thing. It's not as complicated as it sounds, but it's basically how the game. Uh, processes your information of the game versus uh, the other players and in gears it's notoriously been really bad when you look back at the past um you know hitbox issues aside but especially just the internet and stuff the internet's gotten a lot better over the years but there's still a lot of hurdles that tc has to jump over before they get it right and let me get this straight with you guys every developer is struggling with this right apex legend struggles with this battlefield struggle with this CSGO still struggles with this. It's never really perfect, but it needs to work to an extent where the majority of people, again, whether you're a great player or a bad player, it needs to work. A point blank shotgun that should kill someone should work nine out of 10 times. And right now with Gears, it feels like it's a to coin toss, especially on comp where the best players in the world, you can watch them and they will not miss a single pellet because that's how good they are. And they will hit someone three, four times and everyone will say, what the hell's going on? And they just turn around and get headshotted from 15 feet or something, right? That's not a good thing to have something like that. That's like playing a fighting game and you do a certain set of moves that you know does a certain percentage of damage. But then <laughs> when you need it to matter, the game gives you 5% less damage and the guy counters you and you die instantly, right? That's not a, that's not a thing. That's not, that should never be an aspect of the game that people should learn. All right. So that was a good 22 minutes of ranting right there. Um, as always, guys, thank you very much for listening. If you made it this far, um, if you did enjoy it, make sure you leave a like, share with your friends. It really, really helps. And of course, subscribe if you haven't already, man, because there's lots of videos coming in the future. Uh, if you enjoyed this type of discussion, feel free to always join me. I'm always live these weeks on twitch.tv forward slash Dutchonitis. And uh, yeah, man, check out the rest of the links below and I'll see you next time. All right. Have a great day. Peace out.